The Indian market opens lower as geopolitical concerns continue to weigh on global markets. IT, Realty, banks, they lead the losses, while metals and pharma gain. The broader market, however, is outperforming the key indices. LDI Mindtree Islam says the spate of senior management resignation continues with the exit of two global sales vice presidents. The company has now seen seven senior level exits since October 2023. ONGC rises as geopolitical concerns in West Asia remain at the forefront. Metals too continue to rally in today's session. Bharti Hexacom surges over 6% after Jeffries initiates coverage with a buy call and a target price of 1,080 rupees per share. VST Industries also gains as Radhakishan Dhamani buys 2.33 lakh shares and increases his stake in the company to 34.34% to 35.85%. Hello and welcome to Chart Busters. Another day and another day when the markets have opened up in the red. The only solace is we are seeing some body fishing in today's trading session. The markets have come off the low point of the day. The big trigger today will be in the second half of trade where we have two indices that will play out weekly expiry. One will be the Nifty Bank and the other one will be the Nifty Financial Services Index. And if you pull up the Nifty Bank, you'll see that it's not uh, breaking that 20 DMA decisively, which will be giving the bulls some bit of a hope. But the real uh, you know, attraction that we're seeing is in the broader markets. More number of stocks advancing in comparison to the number of stocks that are uh, declining. So that's pretty good news. 1,600 stocks as we speak. Manglam. Good morning, Nigel. You know, when we were uh, looking at yesterday's trading session, there was a dip, then there was a recovery, and then there was a second dip. This morning, the dip saw a recovery. Uh, the question is whether there will be a selling into this recovery and whether there will be a second rally in the market as well. And that is something that we'll be watching out for more closely um, the second half of trade would perhaps belong to two stocks that we'd be looking at in terms of the texture of the market. And that would be HDFC Bank and ICICI Bank, largely because of the reasons that you mentioned, Nifty Financial Services and the Nifty Bank expiry plays out. The Nifty has also taken some support at the 50-day moving average of 20 to 150 thereabouts, holding around that 22,200 mark. So let's see whether that sustains or not. The broader market's doing extremely well. The question, will there be selling in this recovery and will there be another recovery Let's go to the expert. Then Shilpa Rao joins in for a quick technical check on the market. Shilpa, what should one do? Uh, good morning, Nigel and Mangalam, and thank you for having me on the show. Talking about the indices, yes, there is a little, you know, concern whether there will be a selling pressure that we may witness in the second half because we have two indices, uh, a weekly expiry today. But looking at the data setup, we definitely have resistance at the upper end of the, you know, band that, that is around 22,300 to 350 for Nifty and Bank Nifty around 47,800 to 48,000. So this will definitely act as a resistance. So any, I believe any, uh, you know, rally towards those levels should be a selling opportunity because this texture for the market is going to stay a little, you know, wobbly for the next two to three sessions. So in that case, you know, we should go to the, go with the trend and, you know, any rise on the up upside should be sold in. Okay, got it. Uh... Hi, Shilpa. Good morning and good to see you in. What about individual stocks? You know, though the headline index seems a little bit jittery, we're seeing it trade in a bit of a range, but from the broader markets, there are plenty of stocks that are moving around. Any ideas for us? Yeah, I have one buy and one sell. The buy would be in BEL. Uh, the B is the stock is holding very well in spite of all this choppiness. You know, it is trading around, around. I mean, above 220, which is a crucial support for the stock. So BEL on, uh, you know, with a positional view of, of a stop loss of around 220, keep a target of 260 to 280. It is a little positional trade, but I believe the stock is holding very well. And, you know, any sort of pullback or any sort of stability in the market will see the stock rallying very aggressively to those levels. The other one would be a sell in Tata Communication. Uh, the results are due tomorrow, however, so it would be more of an intraday trade today. Uh, since it is trading below 1900, I believe, you know, there can be some more choppiness where the stock may fall towards 1880 to 1850 zones. But then again, those zones will be a very good buying opportunity. So I believe with, with a stop loss of 1920, uh, one may sell Tata Communication for targets of 1880 to 1850. 
Well, Shilpa, would you have a view on Excite? Because, you know, this seems to be the stock of uh, not just today, but the stock of this week, the stock of this month. A big up move is what we're seeing this morning when the markets are a little choppy. That stock is up 6%. How much higher do you think this can go from here or has the bus already left? Uh, it is already you know you know very strong motion so i would believe that you know any you know minor dip or a stop that you may say you have to get onto the bus there so the you know for me the trailing stop loss for people who have already invested should be around 415 and for people who want to you know ride the rally right now you know one may wait for a little dip at around 425 zones and then keep a stop loss of 415 and the stock should test 450 to 470 zones coming soon all right, 450 to 470. And finally, before we let you go, a view on Container Corp. Uh, saw a big decline yesterday post its volume data, which was, uh, you know, uh, re released to the exchanges. Thereafter, it's seeing some bit of recovery today, up around 2.5%, around 950 rupees. Would you have a view on Container Corp? Yes, Concord, you know, with this 930 as a trailing stop loss now, I believe, you know, one can stay long. Uh, if it sustains above this levels, you will see 982,000 levels again coming, maybe 1020 as well. But 930 should be a tight stop loss. Appreciate you joining in, Shilpa. Thanks a lot for that. By the way, we need to focus on the bottom of your screen. Sources to money control are indicating that GQG, Fidelity, HDFC, MF, Quant MF, all of them are looking to invest in the 18,000 crore FPO. Now, this is big, big news coming uh, in there. We'll try to get you further details on that front. But uh, the FPO is priced at a discount in comparison to the current market price. And it seems some of these large names could be interested. So that's uh, the news that's coming in uh, for now. Uh, you know, And I think uh, the FPO anchor book opens to subscription mm -hmm. today. So those are the big names that are coming in there, Mangla. GQG, Fidelity, HDFC, MF, Quant MF are uh, typically, you know, Big names, uh, these are in uh, fray for the anchor book, 18,000 crore FPO. Uh, also, be mindful of the fact that the stock was in FNO ban until yesterday, has come out of the FNO ban today. So there could be some incremental positions being taken in the FNO space out there as well. But this is with regards to their FPO, the anchor book for which opens today. The FPO itself opens a couple of days later. So this is uh, interesting information that is coming from our sources to money control. But talking about money control itself, let's get you a few ideas for profit coming in from our colleagues at Money Control Pro. Sachin Pal joins in with a stock that he's been tracking closely. Maharashtra-based country retail manufacturer GM Rules posted nearly flat revenues in Q4 of FY24. The top line for the quarter came in at around 159 crores, up almost 2% year on year, on the back of steady volume across rural markets. Even for the full year, the company's revenue trends were quite lackluster and it ended the year with revenues of almost 615 crores, which was up almost 4% year on year. Margins, on the other hand, continued to remain very soft, primarily due to the uh, spike in input cost prices. The quarter four margins came in at around 15.8% at the operating level, primarily due to some compression in the, at the gross level. The spike in input cost prices continues to have an impact on the overall margins of the company, and that trend is likely to continue going forward as well. Uneven rainfall as well as extreme weather conditions have had an impact on the overall sugarcane productions as well as other commodities. So therefore, the gross margins of the company are expected to remain under pressure from a medium term standpoint. Overall, the company, company, however, continues to remain on a very solid footing and the balance sheet is also in very good shape. Given that uh, the stock has underperformed the uh, uh, overall indices by a large margin and the valuation of the company at around eight times FP25 earnings, investors can look forward to accumulate the stock from a long term standpoint. Okay, all right. Uh, thanks a lot uh, for that. Well, for the time, we just want to pull up a few stocks. You know, Senko has a big run in yesterday's trading session. Today as well, the stock was up to 10% at one point of time. As we speak, the stock has slipped a little bit. So keep an eye out on that one. It's slipped now closer to the low point of the day. Genus Spa is the other one that has been holding strong. In the last few sessions, it's done quite well. But Genus Spa now has slipped a little bit. So keep an eye out on that stock. And one of the rarities has been cafe, uh, Coffee Day. Yeah. You know, that stock is now up close to 12%. Massive move is what we are seeing. This month so far, it's up more than 45%. And the volumes are very, very high on that one. So just keep an eye out on Coffee Day. That one's spiking up, up more than 10% as we speak. For the time being, we're slipping a short break. You come back, we'll continue our focus on markets as well as on stock-specific action.
Welcome back. A bunch of uh, mid-cap stocks now doing well. We have Mahindra Holidays, which has moved to the high point of trade as well. And alongside that, we're doing decently well on a couple of these other gold players like Tangamal Jewelry. That has the one that has been the one which has moved to the high point of trade. Remember, the last uh, three or four weeks have belonged to the jewelers in terms of quarterly updates coming in. So we've seen decent ones coming in from Titan, Kalyan Jewelers, strong one from Senko. And now Tangamal Jewelry has moved to the high point of trade, a small Tamil Nadu based player with a high concentration towards gold jewellery. So that is something that we'll be keeping an eye out on. Tangamal Jewels is the stock that should come up for you on the screen at the high point of trade. But let's talk about some uh, more stocks which are on uh, our radar this morning. And uh, we're talking about Varun Beverages. Nigel, Varun Beverages is higher in today's trading session after Morgan Stanley has initiated coverage on the stock with a target price of 1,701 rupees and an overweight rating. It's interesting because stock has already seen a big run-up. Um, Morgan Stanley believes that, you know, the company's ability to showcase domestic scale and grab international opportunities has them in good stead with good profitability as well. Importantly, it fits in their thesis of discretionary consumption place for 2024. And at the same time, they believe that, you know, the company can actually grow faster than the listed other FNB industries, so to say. So, growth is what they're doing profitably and as a result of which, they believe that this is a good pick. What is it that they are expecting going forward? They expect revenues to, you know, compound at around 19% for the Indian business with stable margins at around 23.5%, 24%. And at the same time, for its run-up that the stock has seen, it's trading at around 57 times C by 25. Now, you would say on an absolute basis, this looks extremely expensive, but they believe that you know, it's better placed than its peers, largely because of the higher growth prospects and profitability prospects that it offers. So despite a big run-up that we've seen on Varun Beverages, uh, Morgan Stanley is bullish with a target price of around 1700 Okay, all right. Mangalam, thanks a lot for that. Well, uh, Sudarshan as well, he wakes up early, goes through a lot of brokerage notes and preps us up for the day. He's joining in to fill us in with all the top notes that he's picked up. Sudarshan. So I have two stocks, first one, and both these stocks are sharply higher. So first is Jeffries on Bharti Hexacom. It has initiated coverage with a buy rating and target is rupees 1080 per share. It says company offers a way to invest in those part of Bharti Airtel's business that are growing faster. And over FY24-27, it believes company can deliver 16%, 21% CAGR in both revenue and EBITDA. And strong cash generation should drive deleveraging of rupees 5,500 crore and it also sees net debt to EBITDA ratio reducing to 0.4 times by FY27. Next is Excite that has seen like so many brokerages over the last few weeks have initiated coverage or have raised target price. Now the latest one is Nomura. It has a buy rating and target is raised to rupees 485 per share. It says EV sales get validation from Hyundai and Kia agreement and alliance with global companies, government support and EV traction might be key for the success. It is now more optimistic of its ability to win new orders from more global companies and con considering all these things it has raised multiple which is now in line with global peers all right uh, Sudarshan, thanks a lot for that so that's about excite but uh, the other group of stocks which are doing well are the oil and gas stocks also on uh, the back of some brokerage uh, notes coming in motilal oswal has them on its radar sonal joins in with more on that sonal Oh, well, a couple of updates that are coming by in the oil and gas space. Of course, we are talking about the geopolitical tensions. We are talking about high crude prices. On the back of that, the government has gone ahead. They've increased the windfall taxes on crude oil production to 9,600 rupees per ton versus 6,800 rupees per ton. And remember, this is the sixth such revision that we have seen since February and the second one in April itself. Uh, the CES or the windfall taxes on ATF, diesel and petrol, they are unchanged. But this could be negative for the likes of Oil India and ONGC, the crude oil producers, because that could would mean lower realizations. Right now, they are capped at $75 per barrel. Now, there's an interesting note uh, by Moti Oswal on the entire space today because we've been talking about crude oil prices going higher because of tensions in West Asia. They are saying this could lead to a supply crunch and this would really, uh, lead to elevated oil or elevated refining margins and spot LNG prices as well. Iran currently exports around 1.5 million barrels of oil per day, uh, which has China as the biggest customer for them. 
and Iran has also threatened to block the Strait of Hormuz, which is about 15% of global crude and 8% of refined product consumption that flow through this, and 20% of the gas consumption also flows through that. So it is a big area which, if threatened to uh, uh, blocked as well, it would impact the global trade. So that is the reason why we are talking about maybe higher spot energy prices and higher crude prices as well. They say it could be headwinds for OMCs and city gas distribution companies. The outlook is mixed for Gale. Every one rupee change in gross marketing margins could impact consolidated EBITDA for these three oil marketing companies anywhere between 23 to 25 percent. And higher spot LNG prices could potentially dent the volumes and margin outlook for gas utilities, the likes of Petronet LNG, GSPL, etc. In fact, spot LNG prices, they are at the highest level since 12th January at $10.75 per MMBTU, which is negative for the likes of Gujarat Gas because a big part of their imports is spot LNG. So all these stocks will be in focus on the back of that. All right, uh, Sonal, thanks a lot for that. So that's about all the oil and gas companies. With uh, that, we'll simply do a short break. And as we do that, there's an announcement that we have to share with all of you. We have uh, launched CNBC TV 18's first ever live personal finance webinar. It's called CNBC TV 18 Accelerate Personal Finance Handbook with Sonia Shinoy, where she'll be joined by three well-known experts on Saturday, 11th of May, 9 a.m. onwards. We'll be diving into everything you need to know to master your finances, to, to, to learn and you know, grow your wealth, be it insurance, tax saving, managing your portfolio, retirement planning, lots to learn, lots to do. So if you're in your 20s, 30s or even 40s, this live webinar is for you. We have limited seats, so don't miss this chance. Register now, scan the QR code to register or even log on to cnbctv18.com. we we'll see you on the 11th of May. Welcome back. You're tuned into Chartbusters. You're on CNBC TV 18. Well, let's turn the spotlight on Vodafone Idea. They've announced 18,000 crore FBO. It's uh, largest ever to raise funds for its 5G foray. The company is a bit of a roller coaster ri ride of late. Rima is standing by to fill us in with more details and what exactly went wrong for the company, the need for the FBO, and the possible road ahead for the company. Rima, over to you. Thank you very much for that. This FBO. 18,000 crore in size is the largest ever and it's an important milestone in the history of the company. The company was incorporated as Birla Communication in March of 1995. It underwent multiple name changes. It was called Birla at and then it was called Birla Tata at and Limited, and finally it was renamed Idea Cellular in May of 2002. And then Vodafone Idea posted its merger with Vodafone PLC in 2018. The merger had created India's largest telecom company made to combat the rising dominance of Jio. But it was hard. Jio onslaught, declining tariff, big money spent on 3G and 4G auction meant that Vodafone Idea was soon making losses. It needed more money. Then in 2019, the company launched a massive 25,000 crore rights issue at a steep discount of 12 rupees 50 paise. But then the AGR tsunami struck the sector which then added further uncertainty, and then the telecom relief package was needed. It was announced by the government in 2021, which gave the industry a four-year moratorium to repay government dues and also an option to convert these dues into equity if the company is unable to make that equity payment. With this, the government also became the single largest stakeholder in Vodafone Idea, holding close to about 33%. But that wasn't enough. Once again, the company for a while now has been scouting for capital and one year down the line, it's raising 18,000 crore rupees Why the FBO. The question of this piece really now is the cycle turning for Vodafone Idea. But before we get to that, let me give you a quick summary of what went so wrong with Vodafone Idea. It was India's largest telecom company. When it merged, the market share was close to about 35%. Well, it all boiled down to cheap tariffs by Reliance Geo. ARPUs in the industry halved, and then the AGR and Spectrum burden. As per the RHB, Vodafone Idea owes the government 2 lakh crore. Why the AGR liability and deferred Spectrum obligations? The company's position is a bit vulnerable. They have reported losses for 22 quarters now, every single quarter since the merger took place. Its market share has fallen 19% since its merger. It was 35%, it's down to 16-17%. 
competition has resulted in ARPUs coming down substantially. They used to be 180, 190 rupees. It fell down to double digits, 88. And since then, in the last couple of quarters, it's climbed back up to 145. And then the debt burden, more than 2 lakh crore rupees, as of the latest numbers. Now, the question, as we said, is what can turn around the company? Let me list out three things. One, now capital was the biggest constraint for the company. It was unable to raise money. With this fundraise, and marquee investors are likely to participate in the FPO, there was a promoter infusion of 2,075 crore rupees. With this FPO, the promoter will now hope to close a bank funding of 25,000 crore rupees. And with this, the company will potentially be armed with 45,000 crore rupees, equity plus debt. And this will be used for CAPEX. That capex, with that capex money, the company will hope to arrest the market share losses. For the last many quarters, subscriber, you know, market share has been coming down. 70% of the FPO proceeds of 18,000 crore rupees will be used for boosting 4G coverage, capacity and start its 5G rollout. The company has said that they plan to start their 5G rollout and cover 40% of their revenue base in the next 24 to 13 months. Secondly, the company is hopeful of a tariff hike. Tariffs in India are the lowest in the world. It's one-third that of China. It's one-twentieth that of developed economies. While the company is not committing to when a tariff hike will take place, there is a strong case for one and of a magnitude which is similar to what we've seen in the past, that is 20%. A tariff hike coupled with upgrading its existing 42% 2G subscriber base to 4G provides the company a clear runway to improve its tariffs from current level. Vodafone Ideas ARPUs are currently lower than that of the industry. Vodafone Ideas at 145, Bharti Airtel is at more than 200 rupees. And number three, finally, will any relief from the government be forthcoming? Now, Vodafone Idea will have to make some massive repayments starting September 2025. 29,100 in H2 of FI26 and 43,000 annually over FI27 to FI31 once the gov government, morat <coughs> sorry, government moratorium comes to an end. But if the company is unable to meet these government liabilities, the government may need to convert its dues into equity, which could result in a massive dilution. And that's a bit of a risk. Kotak estimates that if the government has to complete convert its entire dues into equity, the dilution could be 76%. So while not anything immediate, there are no immediate you know, capital constraints at all, the street will watch for any forthcoming relief from the government on AGR, any extension on payments of spectrum dues, and that's something the street will watch. And finally, while this is not a reason which can you know, turn around the company, I just want to leave you with one stat, and that's the market capitalization of Vodafone Idea. At 60,000 crore rupees, while its peer Bharti Airtel is close to 7 lakh crore in terms of a market cap. All right, Rima, thanks a lot for that uh, telling, you know, information about uh, Vodafone Ideas FPO, India's largest at 18,000 crores and the yawning gap between Parthi Airtel and Vodafone's market cap as well. The question is whether it turns around with this money or not. With that, we wrap up on this edition of Chartbusters. You stay tuned. Trading Art comes up next.